Hey there, quick note before we dive in, what you're watching right now is a lesson from one of my courses that I've decided to release completely for free here on YouTube so you don't have to pay a dime. So instead of asking you to buy my course, if you want to show your appreciation, here's a couple of things that you can do. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel. These small actions tell YouTube to share my content with more people, which is a huge help. Also, feel free to check out my recommended equipment links in the description below. If you do purchase equipment from these links, I do get a small commission at no extra cost to you whatsoever. Or if you want to, you can leave me a super thanks or even just hit play on one of my playlists. I know it sounds silly, but if you just hit play on one of my playlists and let it play in the background, even if you're not paying attention, it again, it tells YouTube, hey, people are watching these videos. I'm going to push it out to more people. So even if you just want to do that, I would love it. I would appreciate it so much. And then lastly, if you're looking for more personalized help, I do offer private coaching that you can find in the description of this video. Either way, I really appreciate you whether you choose to do one of these things or not just by simply watching this video it means a lot to me thank you so much now let's get to the lesson okay so let's break down the basic parameters of the majority of compressors out there you'll see threshold ratio attack release and makeup gain those are the most common parameters you'll see on a compressor so let's break them all down and learn what they do all right, so when you hear the word threshold, what do you think of? You likely think of the word limit or another word that has a similar meaning, right? Well, the threshold of a compressor is just that, a limit or threshold. The threshold of a compressor determines when the audio will be compressed. In other words, this setting tells the compressor when to start working on the audio. For example, if you set the threshold to negative 12 dB, any audio that tries to go above negative 12 dB on your meter will be pushed down by the compressor. So it's basically saying, hey, when the audio I'm recording tries to go past negative 12 dB on my meter, I need you to not allow some of that audio to pass beyond that threshold that I've set, which is negative 12 dB. Now, notice how I said some of that audio. To make sense of this, I need to jump over to a limiter real quick. A limiter is essentially a compressor on steroids. A limiter also has a threshold, and if you set a limiter's threshold to negative 12 dB, it wouldn't let any audio pass beyond that threshold. Whereas a compressor's threshold will actually allow some of that audio to pass beyond its threshold while stopping some of the remaining audio. But you're likely asking yourself, okay, James, if a compressor doesn't stop all of the audio from going past its set threshold like a limiter does, how do you tell it what to let pass through and what to stop? Well, this is where ratio comes into play. The ratio on a compressor determines how aggressive the compressor's threshold will be. Now does it make sense? If the threshold on a compressor will actually allow some of the audio to pass beyond while stopping the remaining audio, what determines the amount that will pass through and the amount that will be stopped? The ratio does. So now that we know what the ratio does, let's break down how to set it and what each setting actually does. When looking at a ratio on a compressor, you will likely see 2 times 1, 3 times 1, or 4 times 1, and so on. Let's take 2 times 1 as our example. A ratio of 2 to 1 means for every 2 dB that exceeds the threshold, it's only going to allow 1 dB to pass through. Now, let's make this even easier to understand. So you have 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, and so on. But these numbers are just fractions. 2 to 1 is just one half. 3 to 1 is just one third and four to one is just one fourth. You get the idea. So now that we know these numbers are really just fractions, it makes everything so much more simple. Now, if this is rattling your brain, it's okay. Compression took me a while to understand because I didn't have it broken down like this. And even with it broken down like this, it may take a few times of going through this part of the video to have the light bulb go off, but I assure you it will. The attack function on a compressor controls how fast the compressor will begin to clamp down on the audio once it's been triggered. So, how fast will it begin compressing your audio? 
I like to use extreme examples to explain things sometimes. So, for example, if I said the word plosive and I had my attack time set all the way down to zero milliseconds, it would immediately begin compressing my audio, which would result in the word plosive now sounding like plosive. You see how all of the sudden the P sounded really quiet or like it was completely gone? That's essentially what the attack time does, how fast it will begin compressing the audio. Now, will it actually cut off the beginnings of your words that drastically? No. But it's a very easy way to explain what the attack time does. The release does the exact opposite of the attack. The release determines how long it will take the compressor to release the audio from being compressed. I usually keep this around 100 milliseconds for dialogue. Now, we wouldn't want this all the way down to zero milliseconds because if we had our attack all the way down at zero milliseconds, the compressor will begin immediately compressing your audio, but also at the same time immediately let go of the audio from being compressed, and that would result in some really, really weird artifacting in your audio. Output gain, also known as makeup gain, allows you to turn up the volume lost after compression. 